Hey guys, so you can see off to the side here I'm starting my Christmas cards to sell and to hand out this year. I'm going to show you the 10 cards that I did for the October Hero Arts kit. And I can't wait to see what they come out with on Monday for the November kit. I tried to do some different ideas with this kit so they don't really go together as a set. But I still like the way most of them turned out. So for card number one... I colored in, most of these were colored in with my Zigs and my Arteza real brush pens. And then I used some white gel pen on like the deer and I used regular glitter gel pens on the Christmas lights. And if you look closely at the ones wrapped around the raccoon, they have some of the Hero Arts lacquer pen on them. This Christmas tree, I probably spent the most time on. I stamped out and masked the tree itself. Here's the mask I used. Planned out two or three times where my different ornaments were going to go. And then I stamped my tree after masking all the ornaments and candles off. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed because you can't tell. I mean, unless you look really closely, it looks like I could have just colored in and stamped out and cut out the ornaments. But I still like the way it looks. I put a star on top that also has some of the Hero Arts lacquer pen on it. And as you can see, I ink blended the background with Distress Oxides. And I put some yellow behind all the lights and the star. There's something stuck to my card here. It's bothering me. Okay. So I put yellow behind each of the candles that I put on the edges of the tree and behind the star. And then blended in the background with some Broken China seedless preserves and faded jeans and then I used some of my gold this came in a kit last year I don't remember which kit I'm sure you all remember it though and I still have some left but unfortunately the sprayers on both of these broke so whenever I use it I have to kind of take the little thing out of the bottle and flick it on so it came out a little more blobby than I wanted but it still made its purpose to look like either snow or stars. To me, kind of looks like stars now. I used some Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock to make my snow banks and just painted them with that iridescent watercolor that came in the kit. And then I used some light gray Spectrum Noir marker to make my shadows. And I popped the deer and the raccoon up on foam tape. Also my sentiment, which says winter wishes, which I embossed with white embossing powder. And I actually used the white embossing powder from Hero Arts that I recently ordered correctly this time. And I, it came out a little bulky for my liking. So next time I'll use my super fine detail. My, I found it. My wow super fine, super fine white embossing powder. I found where the kids hit it. And... It's on a white card base, and look, see, I gotta start leaving, stop leaving my cards out on the table, because then the kids pick them up. And look what happens. Wait till you see the one card that Jack's touched with cookie hands. Won't be selling that one. So here's card number one. Once again, as always, until I can finish my problems with editing videos, um, if there's anything I missed and you guys would like to know, put it in the comments and I'll answer. Card number two is one of my favorites. I wanted to make a window. I worked really hard on this window. It took me a long time. I used some of the glitter card stock in the back. And of course I cut out the middle because I don't like to waste glitter card stock. My window frame I kind of measured out because I don't have a window die of just these two tiny ones, which were way too tiny for my purpose. I wanted to be looking out the window and I popped that up on two layers of foam tape. In between the two layers of foam tape, and this is, there's acetate right behind that first layer. Um, I put some of the icicles, because I didn't want them to look like they were up against the window right away, and I also didn't want them to look like they were plastered to the background. I did some more ink blending. It was just simple with tumbled glass and broken china, and of course the mustard seed yellow behind the, the lamp posts. And I stamped some of the garland and cut out around it, one for the outside, 
with some mistletoe on each lamp post and one for the inside of the window as if it was decorated with some of the iridescent stars and we got two hills in there and I used some uh, what did I use on there I know it's glitter I think I oh that's right I put glue on there and mushed it down to the texture I liked and I added some of just a square bottle of white glitter that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I put a little guy on a sled in there, did some of the snowflake, or snowflakes that came in the stamp kit with uh, snowflake tinsel and embossing powder. And you can see my two little birds there. I know you can't see him, but I didn't, I mean, you don't see everything when you look out a window like this, so it didn't matter to me that you couldn't see every image. And then I put let it snow and that was it's on a gray card base, but you can't really see it from the front. And that was it for card number two. Also, when I'm done showing you the cards, I have a tip for you guys at the end of the video and a special surprise to show you. Now, when I made card number three, I was watching that Crafty YouTubers blog hop videos. And I saw, I wish I could remember so I could give her props, but if you watch day one or day two, um, if you go to Justine Hovey's channel, she'll have all the days posted to start out the blog hops. She did, this lady did a snowman with a chalk method, and she just used clear embossing powder and then went over it with chalk and brushed it in with her fingers. I did that with this set, but I also wanted to make, you know, a couple of things pop in color. So if you notice the gloves, the scarf, and the lines in the pond, I did them in steel navy embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. I also did the background using my large background snowflake die that I bought as an accessory to the kit in the steel navy also. And then I blended it with faded jeans and tumbled glass, distress oxide, <clears throat> excuse me. And I did some icicles at the top and I did Oh What Fun with that white detail embossing powder from Y. Wow. Oh my goodness, guys. Every video, right? Probably because I wait so late at night to tape them so because I can't edit. So I wait till everybody's in bed. And I used some of the ribbon that tied the kit together at the top. Popped up my black base on some foam tape. And that's it for card number three. Card number four is one of my favorites. It's also the one that Jack got, Jack's got cookies all over. So if you notice down on the pond... And up here next to the lamp on the back I mean he totally ruined this card guys I mean I guess on the upside I can keep it maybe clean it up some and keep it in my craft room but it would have been one that I would have given away and look at the inside he did the same thing so I cut this out with my scallop Sizzix circle dies put some acetate behind it as you can see I used that background sheet that the stamps and dies were uh, adhered to when the kit came. I really loved that paper. I loved it so much that I saved it to cut little circles and stuff out of to use it another time. Put the little girl and boy that look like they're holding hands down there. I colored them with my Copic markers. I did the pond with my Arteza ice blue and light blue uh, real brush markers two little lamp posts. When I got this kit, I knew I'd be using a lot of lamp posts, so I think I stamped out like 12 of them, 13 of them, colored them all in at once. Uh, I stamped Merry Christmas from us on the same colored paper that the base is made out of because I used the circle that I cut out of the base. It has acetate in it, some of the glitter paper from the kit, a little piece of mistletoe down there at the bottom, and then inside is that tree, that lovely, wonderful tree that I cut out so laboringly, if that's a word. Every little nook and cranny. Went over the edges with dark green marker and I used some Nouveau glitter accents in blizzard white, fresh snowfall, to put the snowfall on the edges of the tree. Colored and cut out a star and as you can tell throughout this set, 
I cut a lot. I used the dies, but then I ended up cutting out a lot of that white border. I don't know what it is, guys, but a lot of the times on certain images, I just don't like that white border. It bothers me, and as much as I hate fussy cutting, I'd rather fussy cut it if I don't like the white border, which is why a lot of times you don't see me by the coordinating dies. But this really was, I popped that up on foam tape, it was one of my favorite cards. It still is, even though Jack's ruined it. And then, of course, I grounded the tree with some IG-3 Spectrum Noir marker. And I would have either written on either side of the tree or right here when the card was open. But, of course, I can't use it now. So that's it for card number four. Card number five is definitely one of my favorites. I had it all set up when I was doing the videos and before I had the problem with the editing. I used some of my pearlescent watercolors along with the iridescent watercolor. I used gray and three different colors of blues and I just painted the watercolor straight across with different lines, added different colors here and there till it got the way I liked it. And it's a very light background. But that's what I wanted. And then I cut the tree out, but I didn't do the border. I used some white and silver twine. It was like a buck ninety nine at Joanne Fabrics. And I have three doves. One's covered up, but I did yes, I did that on purpose. That sending is on fog cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. And I wanted this little guy to be blue like a blue jay. And yes, I know they're probably doves, but I did color them different colors on a few cards. I used the blue glitter paper, cut the middle out, of course, but then I took two thin strips of the silver to put behind there, and this is on a white card base. I used some of those iridescent stars and popped up the tree as much as I could so you could see the blue glitter underneath. Of course, with the kids looking at them, it looks like some of the pieces got smushed down again. And I just trimmed my nails because I have such a hard time doing cards with nails. So I'm having a hard time popping them back up. I popped that whole panel up on foam tape. And of course, where's the rest of the sentiment? It's one of the few I put an inside in. I don't always do that. I hardly ever do that. Unless I know I'm selling them. So a piece of Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock. Some of the snowflakes from the kit. I used Summer Sky, I believe, from the Hero Arts kit. The one that came with the layered ocean. And put Winter Wishes inside. And that's it for card number five. Card number six, I started to do one way and ended up doing it another way. So what does this card remind you guys of? I want you to put your comments down below what you think this card reminds you of. I'm not going to tell anybody what it reminds me of until I see your answers. This is another watercolor panel, and I made sure this one was darker. It even has a little bit of pale purple in there, some more of the gray, a lot more of the iridescent watercolor. I did some of the snowflakes, and I did them in three different colors. Um, pale lilac, I think it is, by Nouveau Embossing Powder, snowflake tinsel, and silver. And the silver was in another the Hero Arts Christmas kit last year, last October. And then I put let it snow, let it snow, let it snow on the acetate. And of course I have all my different colored icicles all the way around. I stamped them out in Broken China, Stormy Sky. I did a pale purple, I think that was a Hero Arts color. And I did that super fast so I could put, I put clear embossing powder over all of them. And then of course I hand cut all of them out and I colored them with ice blue, light blue, and haze blue from Zig and Arteza Real Brush Pens and my water brush. Then I put the frame of the silver glitter paper on there and I put in a whole bunch of different beads and some of them are sticking even though I put powder in there. But I didn't want to distract from the background either. So there's some beads, clear beads, blue beads, purple beads, iridescent sequins, blue sequins. I think that's all I put in there. Then I have these large snowflake sequins I had in my stash. 
and I put a different color. They're all clear. Yeah, they're not different colors. They're all clear gems. Uh, I'm trying to see if I took them out of my... Pretty sure there's the, they're the Studio Katia gems. And then I used glossy accents to glue them into the middle there. And that's it for card number six. This is all, this is on a robin's egg blue basil card base. That one I do remember. I don't buy a lot of blue card bases. And look at this, guys. Look how much of this stuff I have left. It just goes so far. You can, a little bit makes a lot. This one is one of my favorite also. It's very plain on the front. Sending happy tidings. You've got those three animals stacked up. And look, I left the border on. I grounded them with gray. I stamped a little ornament there because he had to be hanging something. The two little cardinals, as I think of them, are carrying the star. But if you look inside, it's my very first shadow box card. I guess technically a cross between a shadow box and a tunnel card. I watched the tutorial videos from Jennifer McGuire. And I did screw up. Very first card, guys. I probably should have done it without putting the middle piece in there the first time. I lined it up wrong somehow. So look, can you see how that piece in the middle is buckled? I think I know what I did, but it's too hard to explain right now. <clears throat> you would have had to watch me make it. But I think it still turned out cute. And we've got just some winter trees stamped back there that I bought from a Fisker set at Joanne's. Stormy Sky, Tumble Glass, Broken China background, and I did that on all three. Splashed some water on them, but then I also went over each layer with a white gel pen and a silver gel pen to make snow. <clears throat> My hills are made out of the silver glitter paper. We've got the little boy on the sled. We got a deer back there. We've got a bench, and then on that top layer, we've got the ice pond and the little girl skating. Also, we've got the two lamp posts. I wasn't sure how to put her. I guess she could go this way or the other way where she looks like she's starting to skate on one leg. Put some icicles up at the top. All in all, I think this turned out to be a cute card. Would I send that one out? No, because I know I screwed up on it. But it still turned out cute. I know that homemade cards aren't perfect, but that to me is just something that's way too noticeable to send out or sell. <clears throat> I also like this card. Sorry, guys, you know I'm still sick. I have an antibiotic. It has progressed to antibiotic and prednisone. That's when you know you're really sick. When the doctor says, I'm giving you prednisone, are you using your nebulizer? Then it's like, uh-oh. Anyway, this one's on a white card base. Blue gl glitter frame covering the whole front. Cut out the middle, of course. This base or this card card front oh my goodness was blended with the yellow for the lights mustard seed of course but I think I used a little bit of the squeeze lemonade to go outwards and in the end it didn't matter because the purple covered it up I used the seedless preserves and I used dusty concord faded jeans and black soot around the edges this was not distress oxide this was regular distress inks I still think I like this better. I mean, the comparison, even though this is different colors. Where's that first card? Yes, this blends smoother, but I, in a way, think that this looks more realistic. So anyway, we've got four lamp posts. And do you guys remember? I heard a lot of people complain that raccoons got lights, but there's no lights anywhere in the stamp set. But uh-huh. We got Christmas lights in the stamp set for Christmas last year in October. So I broke those bad boys out, and I colored them in, and I painstakingly cut around them to make light. I mean, yeah, I don't like white borders, but guys, come on. There was no way I was cutting all the way around there and not leaving a white border. It just wasn't happening. I used some more mistletoe. I colored the background in between the leaves a kind of blue to kind of, you know, so you would see the night through it, not white. I have two pieces of snow banks on there with the silver glitter paper. The front one's popped up thin. Oh, no, it's not. I glued it flat down. It looks popped up because I got so many layers there. 
And then we've got two guys, and I mirrored him by using the back of the Christmas tree stamp and went over his edges a little bit to darken them with a Sharpie uh, micro pen. Colored them in. They're both done with Zig and Arteza markers. And then did the Christmas lights, all of them in gel pens, red, green, yellow, and blue. And then made a whole bunch of messy Christmas lights out of that one string from the last year's kit and then cut them out also. So it would look like they were all tangled up. They didn't know what they were doing. And it says, oh, what fun. And this is one of my favorite cards. I like the way it turns out. I heard somebody say, I think it was Crazy Paper Chick, called the little raccoons in a different stamp set garbage pandas. Don't quote me, because I'm not sure it was her. Pretty sure it was her. But I thought that was the cutest name for these guys. They look cute, so you get them suckers up close. I had one trying to eat out of my cat bowl the other day right outside my patio door. And he was a big guy. He wasn't even like... What's the word I'm looking for? Intimidated by me. I had to open the door and take a step out while yelling for him to finally run away. Now this card is on black card sack. I love the way this turned out, but I should have matted my picture. I should have done that on another piece of card sack and put it on this because it just seems like too thin of a card. I took the iridescent watercolor and some green pearlescent watercolor. That's how I did the background. I cut the Christmas tree out of vellum. I did both Christmas tree dies. I did two red cardinals. I did the star in red and green gel pen. And then I cut out the word believe. I got this believe die from AC Moore in their die sele selection up in, with the little dies. And, but I also cut believe out of the green glitter paper and kind of did a shadow. The top believe is cut out of that same paper that was the background for, where is it? For this stamp or this card the one that the stamps and dies were on and then i did red sticky gemstones and iridescent stars for the decorations and i think i even went over i did i went over the vellum tree with a wink Stella pen and that was it for that card oh i did green in the background because when i was doing the cover i got green on the edges Another reason you should do a mat for the front of your card base. Right, guys? It's cute, though. I would send it out. I wouldn't sell it because it seems too flimsy without that front. And the last card is this guy on gray cardstock. I put that whole green glitter base up on foam tape. I cut the center out and put blue glitter paper behind it. And this wreath is made out of the ornaments and the mistletoe. And then I drew in some round berries, colored it all in with my Arteza fine tip four millimeter pens. And then I used lacquer pen on the berries that I drew in. There's the ice rink back there. And then the little girl, the only little girl I didn't use. She also has lacquer pen on her white pom-poms, her sleeves, and her edge of her skirt. It says, oh, what fun. I ink blended that with fired brick and then went over the sentiment again with a gel pen because it kind of blurred it out. And then I put some of the iridescent stars. I popped the wreath up on foam tape. And I like the way it's turned out. I think it's super cute. This is the card, though. My daughter looked at it this morning, my 12-year-old, and she said, Mom... I don't like that last card because when I look at it, it's so sparkly, it hurts my eyes. That is what every crafter wants to hear. It's so sparkly, it hurts my eyes. And I like the way that turned out. Okay, before I get to the tip, I would like to show you, as you can see, I'm working on my first set of Christmas cards to sell and send out. My daughter wanted to make a card while I was coloring, so I gave her some of the um, penguin set. By the way, it's the fav my favorite thing's penguin set. I think it's called Sweet Holiday Penguins. She stamped them out on the Misty. I taught her how. She colored all her images in on her own. We even stamped the, the candy cane without the penguin. And then she wanted a Christmas tree, so I let her 
stamp out the Christmas tree that came in that long font set I'll be using soon. She picked out her pattern paper. She picked out her card base. She picked out her sentiment. And I taught her how to emboss it. We popped it up on foam tape. And she die cut out the, the fishtail banner on her own. <clears throat> so we got the little long font Christmas tree there. Two presents. And then the baby penguin and the present in front. The two different colored candy canes. And this sweet little guy with presents on his head. It's popped up on foam tape. Isn't that just adorable for a 12-year-old's card? I just love it. I had to show it to you guys. She just finished it about an hour before I made this video. That is good enough to send out, guys. <clears throat> so my tip for you today is I wanted to show you, first of all, how much glitter paper I have left. I mean, you saw glitter paper on a lot of those cards, and I still have tons of glitter paper left. We've got this, and we've got these. And then we've got all this, two sheets of green, two sheets of blue, and a sheet of silver. And then it'll probably all get used on my Christmas cards that I'm making. But I wanted to show you how much I had left. I still have half of that blue ribbon left. <clears throat> this is what I have left of that paper I like so much and it. I have all these circles also, and I will use those. Here's my tip. I have all these little pieces of glitter paper that are really too small to do anything with. And this is what I do with them. <clears throat> I take them and I take my regular hole punch. I think this is just regular size. And I just start punching out circles until I can't possibly punch any more circles out. And I mean, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I'll show you what I do with them. We got some green here, just do a couple green ones. I mean, you know it's still a perfectly good piece of glitter paper, and glitter paper is so expensive. Who wants to throw it out, right? But you also know that even though it still looks like a perfectly good glitter piece of paper, how long is it going to stay in your stash before you find something tiny enough to use it on? So I do that, and I cut out a whole bunch of these. And then I have this guy, which I bought at Dollar Tree for a buck. I found it in the cash out aisle. I think it's for medicine. Here's some I cut earlier. I save them for shaker cards. And depending on how the, the thickness of my shaker card, like if I use two layers of foam tape, I'll color the backs real quick of the color, same color it is in case it gets flipped over in the shaker card. But I've used these in so many shaker cards, guys. And they turn out so cute with that, that sparkly, that, that, that sparkle that you don't get from sequins. And you only get from glitter paper. This is from last year's leftover glitter paper from the Simon Says Stamp Doodlebug uh, Santa Kit. And I just thought that was a little tip I wanted to share with you guys. I mean, I even have some, which I think I showed you in a previous video, some uh, alcohol ink paper that, you know, I really couldn't do anything else with. This was from the Coffee Hero Arts set, and then a couple of mirrored mirrored ones. But I, all those little pieces I couldn't do anything with, I cut into circles for shaker cards. So I just thought I'd give you guys that little tip, because all of this will be turned into shaker card material for me. So that's it, guys. There'll be a video out soon with the first set of cards that I make to sell. And give away which will be these little guys <clears throat> you know i colored these in my copics and my spectrum nars in case you wanted to have a look and that will be coming soon let me know how you like the cards let me know if there's anything that you wanted to know that i didn't tell you <clears throat> if you like what you see and you're not a subscriber please subscribe hit that notification button because there's a giveaway coming up for this month there's at least one giveaway every month and i think that's it 
I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.